this is a presentation uh, towards a project under development with this, the team, people from uh, Rio de Janeiro, Raquel Carvalho from Unifesp and uh, Antonio Galvez and uh, the collaboration which is starting with uh, BAF and uh, Unomieni around this proposal. And the idea, uh, our idea today is to show this new protocol which is based on the research we have been conducting in Neuromat. And uh, so the title is Retrieving Context-Free Models Driven by Structured TMS Pulse Sequences Applied in the Primary Motor Cortex. So, but uh, let's start with the TMS, the transcranial magnetic stimulation technique, which was first uh, uh, presented to the world in 1985. So it was work from Barker and collaborators. And uh, this technique consists in uh, the application of a strong magnetic field of high intensity and very short duration in the volunteer scalp as depicted in the picture here. And uh, this uh, uh, stimulation in induces the depolarization of the underlying neurons. Um, in a very uh, um, interesting uh, report, the uh, Inomiemi and collaborators have shown in 1997 that it was possible to co couple the TMS pulse application with the electroencephalographic recording of the brain activity. So what you see in this picture is uh, uh, the three milliseconds after the pulse application in the left primary motor cortex, so it's the top view of the brain. And you see that this activation, this ac neuronal activity displaces from the, this region towards the contralateral hemisphere. Uh, 24 milliseconds after the pulse. And uh, what is also very well known and very, very well established is that this uh, pulse in the primary motor cortex also uh, produces a volley of activation in the cortical spinal tract and uh, uh, recruiting motor neurons in the uh, spinal cord and the uh, uh, motor units in a given muscle. And this very activation can be recorded by means of electromyographic uh, equipment. So it's possible to uh, measure the latency of this response, which in the case of the hand muscles is around 25 milliseconds. And the uh, motor evoked potential, the potential evoked by this simulation in the primary motor cortex, holds uh, peak-to-peak -peak amplitude and duration can also be uh, evaluated. Uh, in the recent years, uh, there, there, there has been a lot of research done in the uh, employee uh, paradigm, which is called pair pulse transcranial magnetic stimulation, which consists basically in applying two pulses in a sequence with a, time, a very short time interval. Uh, and uh, it has been shown that uh, if you apply uh, what we call a conditioning pulse with a lower uh, intensity, uh, followed by a test pulse, you have a modulation of the MAP response, uh, which is associated with this conditioning uh, stimulation. If the time interval between the two stimuli is around two, two milliseconds, then what we observe is an inhibition of the conditioned map. So uh, this, is, uh, this is a well-established phenomenon and very, very well studied. Uh, if the time interval between the conditioning stimulus and the test stimulus is around 10 milliseconds, what we observe in the conditioned map is uh, an enhancement or a um, uh, magnification of the map response which has been called intracortical facilitation. Um, in another set of experiments, it has been shown that this time interval between the first and the second TMS pulse can be expanded up to 100 milliseconds, and you get a modulation effect of the second pulse, which in the 
in the, uh, this, the case of this time interval, uh, uh, results in an inhibition of the MAP response. So this has been called the long interval intracortical inhibition. So taken together, this result indicates that the system has at least one step back memory. Oh, it keeps the memory of uh, uh, a pulse that occurred in the past, affecting uh, the, 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 the present event that you are measuring. So there are some open questions that we want to bring here today. So can the primary motor cortex hold the memory of a sequence of TMS pulse? Can the structure of the sequence of TMS pulse generated by a stochastic chain be recovered in the MAP response? In other words, is it possible to retrieve context-free models driven by structured TMS pulse sequences applied in the primary motor cortex? What is a context-free model? A context-free is a stochastic chain with memory of variable length to model the dependence from the past characterizing the sequence of stimuli. This was introduced by Riesen in 1983. We have employed this approach, uh, which is uh, discussed, presented and discussed in Duarte et al. in 2019 and in a recently submitted paper with uh, uh, Hernandez et al where we have shown that it's possible to retrieve probabilistic context-free models from the EEG signals recorded during the sequence of auditory stimuli presentation. So let me now guide you a little bit through this uh, uh, experimental paradigm and uh, the results that we have gathered. In Duarte et al. and Hernandez et al., we presented a sequence of auditory stimuli driven by a context-free model. Stimuli consisted in strong, weak, and silent or missing hand claps. In the, one of the sequences that we have employed in the study, what we, which was called the ternary sequence, a strong beat could be, was followed by uh, three weak beats. Eventually, the weak beat could be replaced by a silent unit, introducing a variability in the sequence of it, events. This sequence of events can be represented by a context tree, which represents, given the present symbol, all the possible past sequence to the present unit. The transition probability associated to each context is used to choose the type of auditory stimulus appearing after that context in the sequence of stimuli. In our experimental protocol, we have employed the um, EEG measurement that, to associate the electroencephalographic response to each of the contexts uh, that we have presented uh, with this, this sequence of auditory stimuli. So the, the volunteers were exposed to these sequences uh, while they had, they had their EEG recorded, EEG signal recorded. And as can be shown in this panel, it was possible to segment uh, the EEG signal according to each context. For instance, given the symbol 2, we can have two possible paths depicted here. So either 1-1 one, one or in, in pink or uh, one zero in, in green. Um, we have then used uh, uh, the projective method to test the quality of laws of the EEG segments. And using this approach, we, for each of these pairs, we uh, de decided to prune or not the context three, uh, using the EEG signal uh, to recover uh, a final context free per electrode, which is represented here in this picture, per electrode and per subject. And the result of this uh, 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 procedure is represented in this figure. So for the uh, ternary context three, which is shown here, uh, we have a top view of each of the electrodes for which we 
uh, calculated uh, the context tree. And uh, this is the result of, it is a mode for all the 20 subjects that we have evaluated. So, uh, what is shown here is, uh, is that uh, in green, the electrodes which, uh, for which the, the trees were closest to the original tree, which was used to, to drive the uh, sensory stimulus, stimuli. So you can see that um, frontal and temporal electrodes were those for which we were able to reconstruct, best reconstruct these trees. So in the present study, we propose to apply a, a structured sequence of TMS pulse in the primary motor cortex and verify if it's possible to retrieve in the sequence of MAP responses, a signature of the context tree employed to produce the sequence of TMS pulse in M1. So our hypothesis is that it is possible to induce the memory of a sequence of TMS-induced motor events. Uh, I'll show a little bit of the experimental protocol. So the idea is to test at least 20 right-handed volunteers this is a picture of our lab in Rio de Janeiro with a volunteer and uh, one of my PhD students, Fernanda, and our setting here in Rio. The idea would be to uh, select or to invite people with no personal or family history of epilepsy or any other neurological disorders. They have to comply with the TMS questionnaire. Uh, and uh, we are now in the process of, process of submission of this, this protocol to the ethical committee. And the idea so is to fixate the position of the coil, position the coil tangentially ov over uh, the uh, primary uh, motor cortex, looking for the hand muscle representation. And uh, for each participant, we estimate this parameter, which is the resting motor threshold which is the minimal intensity needed to evoke uh, motor evoked potentials larger than uh, five, uh, 50 uh, mi microvolts in peak-to-peak -peak amplitude. Then we have to think a little bit about which parameters, which TMS parameters shall we use to produce the, the sequence of stimuli. So, uh, we have several variables, for instance, which would be the TMS pulse intensities relative to thresholds, so uh, which it would be the intensity of the simulation, uh, which will be the interpulse time intervals, so the time interval between uh, uh, the two uh, stimuli, as, as I mentioned before. Uh, I, we have discussed the use of uh, 100. Uh, milliseconds as a, a, a time interval that is shown to produce, to modulate uh, the MAP response in a sequence of events, uh, but it could be possible to use uh, other time intervals such as 500 milliseconds or one second, I mean, to in, in, enlarge these time intervals. We also know that there is an important coil orientation effect, so it is work done uh, in partnership with uh, uh, the team of BAFA in Ribeirão Preto. If you change the coil orientation, uh, so this is a, a depicts this picture depicts the possible different possible coil orientations and the a map response gathered in the hand muscle, and we see, for instance, that higher responses are, are got, are obtained with 45 and 90 uh, degrees, which is uh, with the handle pointing backwards. So this could be also an option to change the coil orientation as a manner of modulating the intensity of uh, stimulation. And as uh, uh, Histo will possibly discuss, uh, the, we could also uh, investigate the effect of modulating the spatial distance between the TMS pulse, which, which will be a very interesting approach. So this, sorry, this will be our experimental design, say for a quaternary 
context tree, we could set, for instance, the symbol two as a supra threshold, uh, uh, 130% of the TMS multiple threshold. As I told you, this is defined subject by subject. One will be the threshold, 100% of the TMS multiple threshold, in fact, and zero could be the sub threshold. Or we could, uh, uh, or else we could just uh, 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 eliminate this uh, uh, stimulation. So this is something to discuss. Our proposal will be to uh, uh, create blocks of stimuli employing the sequence uh, uh, generated by the context tree, the quaternary context tree, uh, with 120 stimuli per block and uh, 10 blocks of stimulation. And this depicts a little bit of what this, this sequence of stimuli would look like in terms of intensity of stimulation. And uh, our first uh, uh, glance, our first proposal to do the analysis, to perform the analysis of these uh, 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 physiological signals, the, the map signals, will be to employ pretty much the same approach that has been used by Duarte et al. and uh, Hernandez et al. Say, uh, considering, uh, for instance, given the symbol one, you have uh, two as a pass or zero as a pass in the sequence of TMS pulses, and we could uh, cons uh, treat this map response as, uh, as we did with the EEG segments and then uh, do the statistical analysis using the Quest Alberto's uh, approach. It's, this is well described in Hernandez and collaborators. 